Hey guys and welcome back to another video and today with the low cost Android TV box this is the X96 Mini right over here. Now spoiler alert is that I've seen more expensive than this behaving a lot worse. Now starting with the package contents as you guys can see right over here it comes with the Android TV box uh, actually comes with an interesting uh, thing right over here which is the ability to use this accessory and then place it beneath a TV or something like that or on the wall it comes with a velcro that we can hang so might be useful for someone that wants to hide it comes with the usual user manual that no one reads a crappy remote control the power adapter HDMI cable and something that it's not common which is a infrared extender in my opinion this thing is better than nothing but is useless because the remote control included as with any budget android tv box is crappy so my suggestion is always to get a wireless remote control with air mouse capability i will leave some links down below so for some comparisons that i did in the past and you guys can judge now in terms of the box itself as you can see it's quite small on the hand i actually like this kind of design of small boxes in terms of plastic it's a cheap plastic but not the worst that i found uh, and going to the connectivity as you guys may see right over there it has on the right side two usb 2.0 ports a micro sd card and then at the back a power input jack ethernet hdmi av output and then the ir or the infrared uh, extension uh, plug right over here in terms of specifications it's running the am logic s 905w two gigabytes of ddr3 ram with 16 gigabytes of flash storage running android 7.1.2 now in terms of benchmarks which i already tested them uh, and i'll show you guys a few images there on screen starting with the drm it has level 3 as usual on this kind of box it's not rooted in terms of disk speed it's not very disappointing and actually it's a usable machine network i was a bit disappointed as you guys can see maximum values will go up to 94 megabits per second of download when we are connected through the ethernet port and then on the wi-fi only 4750 so it's not that good if we want to use it on a wi-fi connection geekbench we got the usual scores for this kind of sock and tattoo was not able to install and guys one alert over here is that i was not able to install one of my favorite games as well which is responsibles so when we see this kind of behavior on this kind of box expect that there will be a few more apps down the road that will not install right over here now moving to the final benchmarks that i run were the 3d mark score and that was about it now moving to the most important part which is how we use this machine and how it behaves in terms of real world performance and starting with netflix as expected the maximum resolution is 480p or sd quality youtube mobile will run at 720 maximum resolution with the smooth video playback but maximum 720 then youtube TV uh, version it will run up to 720 as well with a smooth video playback and guys here I would like to point out something that I was able to have a maximum resolution of 4k on this machine the machine gets a little bit sluggish but uh, I'm not really sure but it seems that it's upscaling to 4k and not using the 4k natively and this is one of the reasons that YouTube is not pushing to the maximum and probably all the other apps that we are running now moving on to the next test which was my iptv service i was able to run it fine didn't find any issues at all this one of course is running directly from my isp provider and then next i went to kodi latest version at this moment 17.6 and the first files that i did test out were 10-bit videos 4k and they are able to run fine except if they are on the network which is in my case so this box right over here even connected to the ethernet connection it's not capable to play this kind of video without having issues buffering and so on and so forth which will turn the experience to a bad experience now moving on to 8-bit videos which is most of the videos that we have anyways it will play just fine i did play up to 4k but once again on my 4k display that didn't look like real 4k and it looks more of a upscaled version not bad but not the same as the 4k nonetheless it was able to play 8-bit videos h264 and h265 up to 4k on the network and then moving on to plex i was able to play 1080 mkv blu-ray movie files that i've got on my library 
I also tested out the screencast with Android phones to Android TV boxes and it worked flawlessly. Also AirPlay from my Mac to the Android TV box playing some live slideshows on the fly and even these hybrid rate files were capable so the firmware here has no issues at all and the bandwidth available is more than fine to run this kind of screencast or airplay now finally in terms of skype we can use it but the webcam will not work on skype we can turn on the webcam and use it to shot pictures or videos but once we turn on the skype uh, the webcam will not be able to be used so we will get stuck only with audio and that's about it in terms of multimedia consumption moving to the gaming side of thing as we saw on the benchmarks the results were not pleasant in terms of graphics at least so this means that this is not the perfect box for gaming and the tests did reveal that i was playing asphalt extreme as i said responsibles were not possible to install asphalt extreme it was able to play but we noticed some frame dropping nothing huge i've seen a lot worse as i said but it's not the kind of machine that i would select to play some android games especially games that are quite heavy like asphalt extreme and even games that are a little bit heavier then moving to one of my favorite things which is the game streaming capabilities unfortunately i was not able to use this box to stream basically because i'm using the steam link beta version app and it was not able to run on this particular box i've been using in some devices uh, tablets and phones and android tv boxes but this one here just refuses to use it so it needs a firmware fix on the other hand i did try with kino console because i'm using an amd gpu at this moment Moment, and that is my second choice in terms of app and what I can say is that this device is not compatible with this app so there we go one other application that it's not compatible with this device and I'm sure that we will find a few more now there is another choice which was to use moonlight for those of you that have Nvidia GPUs and I'm almost sure without testing that it's capable because 99% of the times in terms of Android TV boxes with Moonlight and NVIDIA GPUs, it will work. But for anyone that has an AMD GPU at this moment, this box will not work for game stream. And that's about it, guys. In terms of conclusion, what I can say is that if you are looking for a really cheap box, I will leave some links down below. And if you have a 1080 or HD TV, then I think this will be fine if you are going to use Kodi or Plex. If you are going to use Netflix, then probably it's not the best solution. If you want something for gaming, it's also not the best solution. But as I said, I've seen worse, a lot more expensive. So it's not bad at all. Guys, you know the pros, you know the cons on this box. You just have to decide if this one is the one for you or not. As always, hope that this video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget the usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.